Hi everyone, welcome to Creel or See Real. We are a Swiss startup dedicated to bring more natural display to the augmented reality. I'm Tomáš Luka and here I would like to share with you our thoughts on why today's AR displays should be regarded as a Trojan horse that may threaten the acceptance of the augmented reality in the coming years. And of course I will show you also some of our recent breakthroughs on the way of getting rid of it. But before I begin, I would like to rephrase hopefully our common vision. Augmented reality has a gigantic promise to become our everyday tool in everything from cooking to neurosurgery within this decade. But before this can happen, a number of technological challenges still need to be solved. Fortunately, most of the AR ecosystem evolves predictably and gets incrementally better every year, but the display technology needs revolution. And here is why. What we would like to experience in AR is something like this. Vibrant and crisp digital images in our own hands. But what we get instead is something like this. A blurred potato instead of the hummingbird. And this is not a problem of too low resolution displays or bad optics. This is a problem of fundamentally wrong way of displaying 3D imagery. To quickly understand why it happens and why it is such a big problem, let's try to do a simple test. And I really wish you could do it with me because it tells it all and quickly. So if you close one eye like this and look at your display over your hand, you can try to virtually see this text at the tip of your fingers like this. But when you actually focus at the hand, which is what you normally do in reality, you won't see the text because it gets entirely out of focus. And this is a massive problem for augmented reality, because practically all today's AR devices display flat images in a fixed distance. Indeed, they just magnify flat display and put it in front of you. We can see the images sharp, but only when we focus at the display. As soon as we focus somewhere else, which is practically all the time, such as on our hand, the display gets out of focus. In this, this is basically the size of the pixel we can resolve in such situation. For instance, most today's 3D headsets set the display plane to 1.4 meter or farther. If the display had the maximum meaningful resolution, which means our eye resolution, around 60 pixels per degree, we will see this quality only in a very narrow range of distances. Because the perceived resolution drops drastically when we focus closer around six times at 40 centimeters, and almost 20 times when we really want to see details up close, such as 20 centimeters in front of our eyes. That's three pixels per degree. The newspapers from 19th century had much higher resolution than that. I am glad that here I can borrow a phrase from Doug Lenman from last year, because this effect makes the personal space within our arms reach the no man's land for today's AR display technologies. With flat displays, we are carrying a Trojan horse to the future of AR. Why the problem is so much underrated if it should be as bad as I say? Well, first of all, there are not many AR devices we could try and experience it. But second, the base resolution of most of it is still too low to be bothered by the next level problems. The third reason is that when the display resolution is reasonably good, the content is often intentionally displayed far. For instance, this is an instruction from the documentation of Microsoft HoloLens. It tells the content developers to place the digital objects ideally two meters far. It helps to prevent the problem, but it is not a solution. We don't have two meters long hands to play with it. And last, but not least, when we do not see any real reference, such as our hands, our eyes have tendency to focus at the display, like an autofocus of a camera. This makes the image sharp, but on the account of terribly wrong behavior of our eyes, because they have to focus at different distance than they converge. And this is double wrong. I dare to say that we don't have to be doctors to probably correctly assume that this is as healthy as wearing someone else's glasses. 
This problem is called divergence accommodation conflict and you may know it from the virtual reality experience. It creates the unpleasant eye strain, especially when we try to see details up close. It is a related problem and it will certainly be discussed at other talks at this conference. So what we actually want to see are truly three-dimensional images with correct focus depth. Something like this. We want that when we focus close, we see all the close objects sharp. And when we focus far, we see the far objects sharp. Well, simply speaking, we want to see normally. So let's summarize it. AR glasses are supposed to provide vibrant and crisp images everywhere around us, precisely interacting with the real objects and coming from sleek glasses on our eyes. And now, on top of it, we want it optically correct, which means coming from yet non-existing displays. It sounds like a mission impossible. Indeed, already the first part is very difficult. So, in the rest of the talk, and in our technical talk, I will try to convince you that the solution is not in the realm of science fiction and that it can work and does work now and well. So first thing we need to realize is that the bottleneck in the whole visualization pipeline is our own eye. Our eye is a truly shockingly bad image sensor. We can sharply see only around a coin size region half a meter away. We can barely read a single word at a time without moving the gaze. Therefore, what you think you see right now is not what the eye captures. This is what the eye captures. Our brain is the amazing graphics processor that creates the impressive visual sensation out of a very bad input. I couldn't resist to try to prove this point with this classical gimmick. Just keep your gaze at the cross in the center. It so amazingly demonstrates that what we think we see is actually created in our minds, not by our eyes. The quest for AR won't be about projecting more and more pixels to our eyes, but about efficiency. As soon as we manage to deliver the minimum necessary image information which our eyes need and our brain understands, we will have the full-scale AR which we dream about. This is unfortunately not possible with the flat displays today. And now the bad news. Part of our vision, the so-called fovea in the center, is actually so good that it needs a focusing lens to be useful. So what the AR glasses need to provide to the fovea, but fortunately only to the fovea, is what the real world does. In reality, the light coming from different distances enters our eye in different cones, less or more steep, like on this picture. The lens then projects sharply only one distance at a time on the retina. And that's unfortunately not all. We perceive also the so-called ocular parallax. It's the small displacement between close and far objects which we see when the eye moves in the eye socket. And it moves all the time, unfortunately. So these are the two critically important visual effects which are entirely missing in today's AR. So how to make them? The main trend today is to use classical flat displays and move them somehow optically to the desired distances. Either to multiple fixed distances, such as two, three or four, or by a dynamic focus sweep of a varifocal element that is responding to an eye tracking information or some content related information. These solutions can certainly benefit from all the great qualities of flat displays, the resolution, the colors, drivers, and everything, but they solve the focus problem only partly and in fact create some new problems. That's why we at Creel are interested in solutions which reconstruct the light more completely and do not require to know where you are looking. Let's call it physical solutions. It's much harder to do but once the hardware is ready, the software can fully unleash its magic. The obvious first candidate is clearly holography. It literally shapes the light waves. But it is today still very sensitive, computationally very heavy and slow in terms of frame rate. And this is in fact very strict hardware limitation. Another option is the light field. Light field is somehow an intermediate solution. 
It treats the light in terms of rays, like elementary school optics, and it suffers from certain diffraction limitations which need to be treated, and I will explain more about it in our technical talk, but it nevertheless provides amazingly well-balanced and practical trade-offs and even some massive advantages, which I will mention later, which make it work well and now, as you will see. The rest of the talk will be about light fields. So first, I would like to debunk few misconceptions. There is a widespread notion that light fields mean automatically and unavoidably enormous amount of data and computation. But this is not true in general. It is valid only for the big light field display panels because they need to render tens of very different perspectives of the same scene and project a vast majority of it to no one's eyes. And on top of it, the content is locked in the panel, which makes it look like an aquarium, and usually it doesn't provide the focus cues anyway. So the first step in making a great light field is to forget about large panels and use only the near-eye display projection. A near-eye display can deliver all or most of the generated data to the eye, and also automatically place the content basically everywhere we want, because it moves with the head. Then we also need to avoid the fundamentally extreme inefficiency and low quality of classical light field solutions. The classical approach is to put an array of micro lenses on a flat display and collimate the light from the individual pixels behind each lens into a fan of directions. In fact, each lens represents somehow a different viewpoint at the 3D scene behind. But this is extremely inefficient because each virtual pixel is then represented by many display pixels. For example, in this picture of a light field source image by NVIDIA Research from many years ago, we can count around 60 repetitions of the parrot's eye, which means that the display resolution is reduced around 60 times while each virtual pixel gets 60 times more color levels than necessary because we can't see that. The micro lenses then create the light field. But unfortunately, this is probably really the resolution which it gives at best. To make a great light field, we need to have entirely different trade-offs. So instead of using many very bad viewpoints, such as those provided by the micro lenses on a flat display, we need to have only few but high resolution viewpoints. And on the other end, we can afford to have very low color resolution in each of them because the color will at the end combine again in the eye. And this is how we do it at Creel. We use an array of pin lights and a fast reflective modulator, which create a small array of high resolution viewpoints practically inside the eye, like this. Each pin light flashes its light on the modulator and projects the image on it to a viewpoint near the eye. Since we know what we want to see from that viewpoint, we can just set the modulator to reflect an image of the scene from the corresponding perspective. The next one from another perspective. And so on. Together, they build the complete light field, in which you can focus close or far, or basically anywhere you want, including almost any optical transformation, such as those substituting your prescription glasses. And this is how we get the light field to the eye from AR glasses. The light field projectors are embedded in the arms of the glasses and bounce an array of light field components from a holographic combiner to the eye. Each component then enters the eye through a slightly different location and provides a different perspective of the same scene. Together, they create a 3D image with a genuine focus depth. We bombard the eye with over 6,000 such low-color resolution images every second, which reconstruct the full color of the scene and makes it technically possible to display a flying bullet. And this is what we do at Creel. I will go deeper into explanation of how it works and into some additional massive advantages, including the super high frame rate, very easy foveation, high efficiency and digital vision correction in our technical talk. Here I would like to show you only the performance as it was improving throughout our history. So this is now our museum. In 2018, when Creel had the mighty force of one full-time employee, we brought a demo which looked like a microscope, but it displayed 
a pre-rendered loop of a primitive green light field video with Super Mario and a flying snake. Don't ask me why. This is a raw footage taken by a camera looking inside the prototype. Only the camera changes focus. Now on the snake and now on the Mario. It is very important to understand that the display doesn't need to know whether anybody is looking inside. It already reconstructed the correct light field. It was a crude demo, but already showing the great potential quality of a sequential light field as we do it at Creel. In 2019, we decided to demonstrate the ultimate light field quality regardless the hardware resources. The demo was huge, but its performance surprised even us. This is again an entirely raw through the lens footage taken with a camera that is changing focus. And by the way, it shows less than a half of the total field of view, which was over 100 degrees. Now the camera is focused on the face of the frog and now it changes to the tree. Even if we zoom in, we never get bothered with the pixelation. So at this moment, we knew that the light field can look like real. Since then, we worked only on making it smaller, lighter, inexpensive, efficient and interactive. We unveiled our first AR prototype last year. It was still a tabletop demo, but already interactive. This is a footage taken through the combiner. You can see a paper forest with a digital cottage far, as the focus should indicate. The dragon is also digital, but this time controlled with a joystick. So that's why his movements are sometimes a bit weird. We could first time see how the augmented light field looks like. Now the focus points on the dragon's head, while the cottage and everything far is blurred. By the way, here we were surprised by the pretty good occlusion behavior of the dragon. And now the cottage gets in focus and the dragon takes off home. And this is how our light field headset looks like today. We shrunk the projection engine to the size of two matchboxes, drivers to similar size, and mainly we massively improved the rendering efficiency. I will say more about it in our technical talk again. It is now a fully interactive AR headset with spatial tracking and hand tracking. And this is again an entirely raw footage taken by a camera that is sitting behind the combiner. Notice how the dragon is getting sharp together with the hand when the camera focuses on it. You won't see this effect correctly with practically any other headset today on the market and certainly not with 60 degrees field of view which we have. And this is where we are heading at the end of 2022. Foveated light field AR glasses which will be tethered, not like this one. It may look challenging and indeed it is challenging but it is not impossible, it's just great engineering. We are now 20 people, partly the dream team of engineers from Intel Wound and Magic Leap to make it happen. So stay tuned. I spoke only about AR in this talk, but similar problem, namely the Vergence Accommodation Conflict, is present in virtual reality as well. And it has the same solution, so that's why we built a VR headset as well. And this is how it looks like. It has 100 degrees total field of view per eye with 30 degrees high resolution light field in the center. And this is what you can see inside. Again, the change of focus occurs only in the camera. The light field is already complete. The headset doesn't need to know where you are looking. You may notice that the light field is only in the central part of the image while the periphery is flat. And in fact, it is like that. The periphery is normal flat image, an equivalent of HTC Vive Pro. In the footage we can compare the light field part and the flat periphery, but in reality the high resolution part of our vision spends most of the time within the light field. So let's see the difference at still photos. So here you can see that the text is perfectly readable, even when we zoom in at the dashboard display inside the car. And now we change focus at the camera outside. And this is what you won't see in any other product on the market today. And on top of it, we are now able to render heavy scenes while the computation requirements are approaching the equivalent of classical stereo rendering. 
My time is up. I hope you enjoyed the talk and I hope that I convinced you at least a little bit that the bright future of AR and VR may be even brighter with light fields. And before I close up, I would like to give all the gratitude for the progress which I have shown to the amazing team which stands behind it, our team at Creel. Anyway, I thank you very much for your attention and have a nice day.